A while back, somebody left a comment on one of my YouTube videos, and in reference to me, they said that uh, I look like I could be a child molester. Yeah, I have handled some mean comments on YouTube before, but that one felt a little harsher than usual. So I took some time away from making YouTube videos just for a little bit. And during that time, I also found myself um, spending more time just thinking about how the abuse scandal, um, the priest abuse scandal, has impacted my experience of the church, my experience of ministry as a priest. In the United States, it was 2002 when the Boston Globe helped to put the priest abuse scandal on the front page of the news and really on the forefront of everybody's mind. And I was in high school at the time, and I can remember kind of the experience of the people in the community at that time. There was a sense of betrayal, there was anger, there was sadness, confusion. I can remember our, our priests preaching about it uh, from the pulpit and to see their emotions around all of this as well. Um, it was interesting then for me, um, going into college in those next few years, uh, I started to be open to the idea of being called to the priesthood. And it really felt like the Lord was at least nudging me towards seminary. And that was an interesting time to be discerning the priesthood. Uh, as um, everyone's kind of understanding of the priesthood, the Catholic Church has now been colored by this scandal. And I did have some really uncomfortable conversations um, there in college before I entered seminary. As I was wrapping up my college time preparing for seminary, I remember I was saying goodbye to people in the theater department at my university. And I remember one student uh, asking me if uh, I wanted to be a priest so that I could touch children. And I remember one professor uh, saying to me, hey, good luck in seminary and uh, don't go touch any little boys now. Yeah. I don't understand um, being able to make light of uh, the abuse of children, and yet that was a little bit of what was happening at that time. And I, I have heard from priests who were active in ministry at the time when all of that hit the news, they dealt with a lot worse. I, I talked with priests who said that they've been uh, yelled at in public by strangers, spat upon. Um, I know that that sort of thing was happening back then in particular. For the most part though, during my years of seminary and honestly for most of my priesthood, it's mostly felt like it's a thing in the background. It's a, it's a shadow uh, that is uh, over the church, um, but it's not impacting the church um, the way that it was 20 years ago. And in the course of my time in college and seminary and now 10 years as a priest, yeah, it's something that still comes up on occasion. It may not be the most dominating thing. It's not the first conversation I have with people anymore when I'm meeting a stranger on an airplane or having a haircut or something, but I, I, it's still there. It's somewhere in the background and sometimes it still comes up. So I think about it whenever we're having trainings uh, for volunteers or for staff members or for clergy um, in order to uh, make sure that we provide a safe environment for children and how do we recognize the signs of abuse. The church has worked hard uh, to make sure that We've actually implemented changes in the way that we care for children in our parishes to ensure their safety. And I worry about people's perception of me whenever I'm around kids. Maybe I'm at youth group, maybe I'm at religious education classes. Maybe I've just got kids around me because they're being altar servers for mass. I worry about what people's perceptions are of my attitudes and my behavior around the kids. And on occasion as a priest, I talk with people who have experienced abuse in the church by clergy sometimes and it's a it's a humbling thing to be kind of invited into that space and to you know, talk with someone who's been through that and how they navigated the the emotional sides of that and um, the pain that they've been through and so um, it's something that comes up in ministry regularly enough and I think about when this all broke 20 plus years ago I don't think any of us really knew what was going to be the lasting impact on the life of the church. And clearly it has impacted the life of the church in various ways. But also, at least in my own diocese and in my own parish, it's been interesting because it feels like God is really doing beautiful things still. In spite of the wounds, in spite of the crimes, the sins that have happened in our past, God is still renewing people's lives. Uh, the Lord is still transforming the church from within. And I see that in our diocese and I see that in my parish because 
we're experiencing growth still. In my parish, we have 22 masses a week. Uh, we have long confession lines. We have so many couples coming to us right now for marriage prep. I think we have more people in RCIA to become Catholic than we've seen in a really long time. Uh, we've got growth, and we've got not just uh, growth in numbers, but there's uh, growth in a spiritual way as well. I see the devotion of people. I see uh, how many more people are showing up for adoration and for uh, times of, of holy hour and spiritual encouragement and Bible studies. There's a hunger, there's a desire, and there's a real cooperation that I see uh, of people who are allowing the Lord to work in their hearts and help to make the church a holier place. I think for a lot of people sitting in the pews today, there's a memory of the priest abuse scandal, but I don't think that it feels like it's impacting the day to day the way that it was maybe 20 years ago. I think a lot of us are experiencing uh, the life and the healing and in God's grace right now, working in our lives and even working through the wounds of the church. But I know that for those who have suffered abuse, from the church or from clergy. I know that um, the abuse is all that a person can see when they look at the church now, or when they see this Roman collar, when they see a priest. Um, I understand that there's a, a visceral reaction there, that there's a, there's a triggering of sorts that happens um, on an emotional level. Uh, and that's the, the totality of what a person sees when they're looking at the church. To all of those who have suffered abuse, especially at the hands of clergy, I want to say I'm sorry. And to all of those who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone who is a father figure in your life, I want to say I'm sorry. I know that for some of you, uh, that apology may feel very empty because I'm not the person who hurt you. You're, I'm not the person you wanted to hear that from. But I know for some of you as well, this might be the first time that you're hearing those words from somebody in a Roman collar. I love you, God loves you. I wanna be a good priest. I wanna be the kind of priest that brings peace into the world and brings healing into the world. And if all of us are willing to allow the Lord to transform our hearts, then the Lord will make us more like himself. And then we really are transforming the world and the Catholic Church into a place of peace and a place of healing for everybody. So let us continue to pray for each other. And let us pray that in Jesus, all things are made new. God bless you.